Hello Booktube, this is Weekly Reads, and I've had a very good reading week. I started my reading week with Survivors, Children's Lives After the Holocaust by Rebecca Clifford. This is a history of the lives of the child survivors of the Holocaust in the years after World War II. The children um, survived um, the Holocaust in a variety of ways. Many uh, went into hiding with host families, some with their families. Others um, fled to neutral countries or managed to make it to uninvaded allied countries. Or some um, managed to survive the death camps or some of the con concentration camps. Uh, Clifford then looks at, the, and she primarily focuses on the children's lives after the war um, in the immediate aftermath where these uh, child survivors were housed often in group homes or care homes and then either um, aged out or um, were reunited with family or were fostered or adopted in other countries. Uh, Clifford then looks at um, these now adolescent lives as they try to figure out their own identities, often not knowing who they are, what their background is um, bef before the end of the war. Um, and then gradually their lives, as they grow into adults and into middle age, and eventually as like old, like the last survivors, um, and how these child survivors sort of come to terms and begin to figure out exactly how they fit into um, the Holocaust survival narratives. The book is really good. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's powerful. It's moving, at times heartbreaking, but it's a very, very good book. And um, the end, is, it's really nice. Um, and I also like how one of the subplot it, subplots is a focus on psychology and um, psychiatry and how um, working with um, the child survivors as well as older survivors um, influenced um, the development, the evolution of psychology and psychiatry. It's really, really good. I just, I really enjoyed it. I had a great reading weekend with survivors. And then on Monday and, well, technically on Sunday, um, and then through the rest of this reading week, I've been reading the Queen by Matthew Dennison. This is the biography of Queen Elizabeth II that came out uh, last year. And I've been looking forward to reading it. And um, sadly, um, Queen Elizabeth's death was the impetus to finally get around to reading this. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a really good biography. It was rather enjoyable. Um, it does start rather, the beginning's a bit, oh, what's the right word? The beginning, I think, is cluttered, and maybe too much focus is paid to Elizabeth II's early childhood. Um, the book doesn't really pick up until the abdication crisis. And as much as I enjoyed the book, um, Denison spends, I think, a little too much time on the minutia of fashion, I would say. Um, and a lot, of, I mean, he does focus heavily on the family and particularly as Elizabeth II's children grow up into adults, um, the um, tabloid um, side of things, sadly, 
and he doesn't pay nearly enough attention to um, Elizabeth as queen and sort of the her relationship with her prime ministers. I think that could have been extended. Um, certainly the queen as head of the Commonwealth. Um, there are some very interesting um, moments like with uh, the Lucasa meeting, um, her second trip to South Africa, and others that really, I think, if they'd been given more focus, would have been the highlight of the book. And I think when it comes to bi biography of Queen Elizabeth II, I think I would really like one that is, <clears throat> excuse me, in the fashion of a King of the World by Philip Mansell, which looks at Louis XIV as a global monarch, as well as also looking at his life in other ways as well. But I would really love to see um, a biography of Elizabeth II that looks at her in that sort of global context, rather than the more tabloidy sort of things that Denison does focus a little too much on in this book. But still, I really enjoyed it, despite my criticisms. Um, <clears throat> so, what will I be reading this coming reading week? I will be starting this, focusing Saturday, because pretty much it will be all Saturday, on Toleban Hanako-kun by Aide Iro. I'll be holding up a volume 8. I will be reading volumes 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. In volume zero uh, this weekend. So I'll be caught up for when volume 16 comes out, I think in October. So Tolaban Hanako-kun is a manga series about an incredibly haunted school in Japan. Um, Nene is a, a student who is told that if she goes to a specific toilet stall and performs a set ritual, she would be able to summon the uh, spirit known as the Tolaban Hanako-san. Nane goes to the stall, she performs the ritual, and she summons Hanako-san. However, unlike the traditional version of Hanako-san, which is of a young girl or young woman, uh, this particular Hanako-san is actually a young boy, Amane, this character here. Um, yeah, that is a money and not that little shit Tsukasa. Um, and so that makes him Hanako-kun. So, Nene makes a wish, and Amane tries to grant it. It doesn't go well, and Amane has to rescue Nene from the consequences of her wish. Um... In exchange for Amane's help, Nene agrees to become his assistant, initially just cleaning his toilet stall, but eventually she helps him in his duty um, regulating the relationships between the living and the supernaturals at the school. There are seven mysteries of which Amane, as the Toban Hanako-san, or Hanako-kun, is the seventh and has a regulatory authority over the other six as well as the other supernaturals at the school. Joining Amane and Nene is Ko, a young exorcist, who initially tries to exorcise Amane, but later becomes friends with Amane and Nene and joins them on their adventures. There is someone or something who is manipulating the other supernaturals in the school, making them more violent, more malicious and malignant. This individual is Tsukasa, um, Amane's twin brother, who is a little shit, um, and joining him as a trio of older students. Well, technically, Sukasa and the two is, makes it a trio. And so they basically work against each other. It's, I'm loving um, Toleban Hanako-kun, and I'm looking forward to reading all nine volumes this weekend. I should finish um, Toleban Hanako-kun uh, on Saturday. So on Sunday, I will be reading 
uh, The Cloud Forest by Peter Mathiasen. This is a nonfiction work about um, Mathiasen's expedition to South America, and I'm really looking forward to it. I've been wanting to read um, Mathiasen's work forever, and I'm very happy to finally get around to doing it. And once I finish uh, Cloud Forest, I'm probably going to do my contribution to Autumn Amore. And I'll, I think I'm going to do a bell redemption of Love Lessons by Heidi Cullinan. Um, it's on my Kindle, so I'm not going to get it out because I think whenever I've done like uh, books that have been on my Kindle, they're washed out. So I need to kind of figure out how to do that. Um, and if things don't go well with Love Lessons, I will probably uh, switch to Life and Times of Michael K. by James Coetzee. This is the winner of the 1983 um, Booker Prize, uh, which is my birth year. And so this was one of the books I'd selected for the uh, birth year book tag. And also, since it's very slim and came out in the 80s, it will succeed um, Frisk by Dennis Cooper for Shorty September, since I selected Frisk as uh, the 70s and 80s prompt, as well as the book I would regret to reading. And while Frisk did live up to the book I regretted reading, or failing on in this case, um, it came out in the early 90s, so this book will take care of the 70s and 80s prompt. So that's my reading plans for this week. Um, videos next week. I don't know if I will have any videos on Monday. I have some errands I need to run and so that might take me away from filming videos on Monday. Tuesday I'll try to do some tags. Wednesday, Thursday, maybe some tags, maybe some discussion videos, not sure. And then, of course, on Friday will be uh, weekly reads. So I think that's all I've got for this um, week. So I'll see you next week. So until then, thank you. Have a great uh, rest of your evening and weekend. And I will see you hopefully on Monday. So until then, thank you and stay safe.